Russell says the only romantic relationships that she's had in her life have been with objects. She's something called an objectum sexual. She literally fell so in love with the Eiffel Tower in Paris that she had a wedding and committed to the tower for life. And, and I understand you have a tattoo? I do, yeah. In fact, you know, not, you know, a conventional wedding, you would have a ring, but for the Eiffel Tower and I, it's a tattoo on my chest. Oh my gosh, so. you guys see the tattoo on her chest? <laughs> like in between her chest? <laughs> okay. Um, this is a representation of... Actually, I'm actually polyamorous, so I love more than one object. Um, the Eiffel Tower. We've had shows here about polyamory. Yeah. <laughs> where like there's a man and a woman, and mm -hmm. they love like a lot of different people, and they have this. Right. It's an open relationship. Yeah. So you're saying that you have that with your objectum sexuality. Yes, in my case, but the, it's not speaking for everyone. Okay, so you married to the Eiffel Tower, but open relationship. Right. This is an open relationship. Okay, and this is a representation of your open relationship in front of us. Yes. What is this? This is actually the Berlin Wall, and while it may seem a little bit like, you know, oh, the Berlin Wall, um, I kind of have a kinship with this object because uh, uh, this is an object I feel was misplaced in the world. Well, this is a replica of the Berlin this Wall. Is, this is, this is, yeah. And this is a piece of the Berlin Wall right here? This is an actual piece, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So if I were to touch it, does that, do you, will you be like, hands off my man? Maybe. <laughs> like, for real, like seriously, yeah. like, am I, is that like really like, a, um, um, am I... No, well, actually, because I know that your intentions are not such. Got it. I mean, you're just basically looking at the object for its practical purposes only, nothing beyond that. No. Okay, let's talk about a sex. This is an awkward question for me. Yeah, it's awkward for me as well. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll try to put it mildly. Mildly. So you, you, you are attracted to, you're in love with these objects, mm -hmm. the Berlin Wall, the piece, the actual real piece of the Berlin Wall, right. married to the Eiffel Tower. Have you ever had any sexual relation with these objects that you're in love with? Well, I'm not broken, so, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm completely fully functioning and stuff like that, but when it comes to intimacy, I think intimacy is defined by the partners involved, and I think the term sex is kind of pretty much generic. They, people get this idea in their head about it. Well, I prefer the term intimacy because then there's a of stuff like what's intimate for me might not be considered intimate for somebody else so what would be considered intimate to you like for me touch is very very important touch and there's also an element of smell and can you show me with the berlin wall piece you want me to get down and dirty with the berlin yeah, wall i would yes <laughs> you can pick up the piece um, there and show us like what would be making love to that piece well okay uh this is <laughs> oh oh so you would do more if we weren't on tv like if it was private Actually, what it is, really, it's about this transfer of energy. It's like feeling that this object is kind of like an extension of my own being, like we're becoming one. Okay. And I would say that in human lovemaking, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the puzzle pieces don't fit. Yes. <laughs> so there is... That'd be very painful. Yeah. <laughs> it okay. <would> be. <laughs> right? I know the girls are like, oh, gosh. <laughs> For me, you know, I mean, there's... Uh, your, your body's got nerves everywhere. Yes. And um, to me, it's really about touch and kind of feeling this. Okay. For example, you know, you got good air conditioning here and I'm, I'm kind of cold. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the Berlin Wall piece is a little bit warmer. So when I put my hand on this piece, I can actually feel the transfer of temperature between me and this piece until the point where we reach equilibrium. Wow. And okay, and, so do, and you feel it can start to feel aroused, and then go I further can. if we want on can television. My body that way. Yeah, it, you know, time, place, you know, yeah. situation. Now let's talk about the, um, the the Eiffel Tower because the Berlin Wall, we all know, it came down. So there's right. pieces that people can actually have with them. So right. you can always have this with you. Right. Eiffel Tower. You can't have the Eiffel Tower with you. You can have a tattoo, but right. you can't have the Eiffel Tower with you. So, and it's far. Paris, expensive flights. What about like replicas? Like I love Vegas, and they have the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, they do. Hotel, the, the Paris Hotel. Mm -hmm. Can you go there and be like, and go into that re Eiffel Tower restaurant and feel connected? Actually, no, not really. I still Epcot try to, Center. I still try France, to stay connected with the real Disney. Eiffel Tower in Paris, and like you know, I'll get up in the morning, fire up my laptop, and I'll turn on the webcam. There's a webcam for a live like 24 one. hour. Yeah, and I'll have you know. Tea so in the morning would the one in Vegas be like a like just like a fake? It's, it's just, just yeah. It's it's not it's not the Eiffel Tower. It's just yes. a, a replica of the Eiffel Tower. What about rejection? Could the Eiffel Tower divorce you? Could the Berlin Wall leave you? Technically, there are those feelings. I mean, I've been in relationships with objects where it just, you know, there was no synergy there and it just didn't happen. So, yeah, I mean. And you've been heartbroken? I have. Because the object has left you. 
Yeah, I mean, I had an object love with my 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 bow. I'm I'm in the U.S. National Archery Team. Oh, like your oh, like bow and arrow, right? The bow. And we had the most perfect relationship. I mean, I'm a two-time world champion, record holder. Did all this great stuff with my bow. We, we worked together. We played together. We slept together. You know, we had a really you slept together. How did you sleep with your bow? Besides, I mean, did you sleep with your bow, or did you sleep with your bow? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just leave it at a kind of sleep with your bow. Um, I couldn't tell which tone yeah, that was. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> With us is um, sexologist Dr. Amy Marsh. So, Dr. Amy, when I first heard Erica's story, I thought that it was um, that she was joking. I mm -hmm. thought she was doing this to get a lot of publicity. I almost didn't want her on the show. And then um, my producers were explaining to me that this is something that's real. Can you explain that, exactly what objectum sexuality is? It is very real. It's rare, but it's definitely real, and it's. Um, imagine, you know, we all were children once and maybe we had great parents and lots of friends, but we still had a wonderful toy or a blanket or something we oh, felt like very close to. Oh, like a blankie, how kids go crazy for their blankie. Yeah. Now, think of those feelings as a grown-up and if you're wired to respond, to continue to respond to objects, then it will feel very natural to you. And the research I've done into this group uh, really shows that they feel very natural and happy about this. Wow. And it's not for lack of other kinds of human it, relationships. Does it have anything to do with trauma, abuse, sexual abuse, rape, anything like that that no, would make you... Not really, no. no. In fact, if it did, we'd have a lot more objectum sexuals because we Got all know it. quite a lot of people have been traumatized. So people are born this way. I think so. We need a little more research to know, yes. but I think it's a question of wiring and orientation just like heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual. Got it. How many um, objectum sexual sexualists do you know? Um, personally, I know quite a few. I've actually spent my entire life savings traveling around the world to meet all of the different ones because for them, I'm often the first person they've ever met that, that has it and will speak have, publicly. Right. I know you, at the break you were talking about that, that you're happy to be here to speak to them. That's what you're that's here exactly, for. That's what it's for. I mean, this is not about, I, I mean, I'm a three-time world champion. I won championship in martial arts as well, and I became a celebrity in Japan. It's not about media for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was a chance that uh, I could come out and tell my story, reach out to people that, you know, are otherwise sitting at home thinking, wow, you know, going through the same things I went through when I was younger, trying to put up a front. Or Mm -hmm. in the closet and not socializing because they don't dare to come out with their orientation and I have this chance to reach out to them and say hey you're not alone. Do you have a website? I do have a website. Okay well go to tyrashow.com if you feel any kinship to Erica in these issues with objectum sexuality and we'll link you to her site. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.